Hi, I'm Eva. And I'm Sarah. And we work at the Naperville Public Library. And today we're talking to you about altered book crafts. Rather than walking you through one complete project, we're going to show you a different, a couple different techniques that you can do at home depending on the supplies you have available. So you might not know what altered books are, but we'll explain it to you. Um, it's a great way to give new life to old books. If you've never thought about it before, take a minute to imagine reading a physical book and you realize they're interactive. You flip the pages, you flip through them. You imagine the world and the people that are being described in the text, and then you create your own understanding of the material. I'm sure you've spoken to someone who had a completely different idea of what a character looked like, for instance. Book arts make that interaction tangible because you change the book. An altered book is a form of mixed media artwork that changes a book from its original form into a different form, altering its appearance and or meaning. So book arts can involve change, uh, working with what's in the book or just working on top of the book and using the texture and the physicality of the book as um, a fun feature of the work. So if you're at your house and uh, you can't find a book that you want to make into an art project, uh, don't fret. You can still do this craft at home. Um, you can use a magazine or a catalog, maybe an art journal or a notebook, or um, you can bind your own book and make art in that. Or you can just work off of any paper you have at home, like a newspaper page or any scrap paper you might have. But you might be surprised, you might have books at home that are bonus material, <laughs> things you don't really need. Um, so artist books, I just wanted to tell you are about them because those are sort of the most extreme version of altered books. And as you can see in these photos here, they're absolutely gorgeous works of art. Um, the Smithsonian Library describes them as books that are works of art, like paintings or sculptures, but in book form. And these are often in some of the most amazing collections because they're really quite interesting and exciting. Um, and the uh, University of, um, I'm sorry, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago actually has a really amazing artist book collection that I'd recommend you check out when you can leave the house again. <laughs> and one of the most famous versions of a artist book and an altered book would be A Humament. And the reason why it's so famous is because it was actually turned into a hardcover book that was published. So you would have been able to buy it in a Barnes and Noble. The author, Tom Phillips, or I should say the creator, the artist, found an old book called A Human Document. And he um, took out some of the letters to create a new title and then continued that tradition of sort of um, hiding and revealing certain words and letters to create a whole new story and um, tons of art. And he actually redid it in multiple editions, each time coming up with new meanings and new stories on the exact same pages. So if you want to know more about that, I suggest you look him up. So this is an example of what an altered book might look like. Um, just to go over some of the different sort of techniques, the sunflowers that you see in this photo are a technique used called image transfers. Um, the make more happen is sort of a collage element and you can see the painting down on the pages as well as the added washi tape on the border. This is an example of window cutting as well as painting. So window cutting allows you to create depth in your books as well as make it interactive so that when you turn the pages, the sort of the story, the visual story changes along with it. And this is another example of window cutting. Um, just a circle in the center there adds depth and sort of a frame to whatever object or photo they have behind it. They also do a little bit of collage on the inside flap there. Um, this is an example um, where you see on one side there is window cutting so that when you turn the page you then have the full image revealed as well as window cutting on the left revealing what was on the other page. So but all four of these pages had to work together um, to make this work. And it also interacts with um, what was originally on the page, the title of the chapter, The Safe Person. And here's another example of sort of the pages interacting. In the, the first screen there, you see all of the eyes of the moth wings showing through. And then as you flip it, you see the full moth photos. You actually see more and more moth, moth eyes each page you turn. Is that correct, Sarah? That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, that's the final reveal page. 
And this one is created by an artist called Will Ashford, who makes a lot of altered book pages and altered book projects. Uh, at the very bottom there, it's a bit blurry, so I'll tell you, he circled a, a sentence. I like the story as well as when you told it. And then he circled the letter I to create raindrops across the whole page and the umbrella. Um, so this sort of is working with the text as well as creating um, imagery. And Will Ashford, like I said, creates a lot of things. And he, on his website, shared his methodology, which I thought was really helpful. So he focuses on revealing words um, and and then in contrast, concealing words to create new meaning. And similarly with images, adding and subtracting images to create new images. And then using new words built out of other words. So art about the word art leads art being just about everywhere, um, leads to art being just about everywhere. So he made an artist book called Art. And if you were to zoom in on this image here, the black a uh, box there, you'd see that he's constantly creating the word art out of individual letters. And so before we talk about the different techniques more in depth, we wanted to highlight a database, a fairly new database at the library. It's free with your Naperville Public Library card. Um, and it's a database for a bunch of different crafts. So you can uh, log in there to see different classes and tutorials. So if you want to get there, you're going to go to our, our website and at the top there in the blue bar, you're going to hover or click on resources and services and um, it's going to pop up that secondary gray window and you're going to go ahead and hit research and learning. It's going to take you to another page that lists um, a bunch of our databases, but as you can see at the top green bar there, um, we highlighted creative bug on our website. So you can go ahead and just click into that green bar there and it's going to take you to this screen um, and you're just going to sign up with uh, your email and your library card and this is uh, the screen that you're going to see once you get into creative bug um, it just kind of shows you that there are a bunch of different subjects that you can do anything from knitting to jewelry making to like holiday crafts there's also a whole uh page set up for altered books, um, a 28 day altered book challenge. So definitely take that, take a look at that if you want more after you've watched this video. And in case you need a book of your very own to work in, they have a ton of different book binding tutorials. So let's talk about techniques. Um, the first one we're gonna talk about is found poetry and blackout poetry. At its very basic form, it's gonna look a lot like that middle photo. Um, you're just going to block out the majority of words on a page and create a poem with the words that you leave. You can do this on any page. It doesn't have to be a book page. It can be a magazine page or a newspaper page. Um, or, I mean, it doesn't have to be just blacked out in marker. You can do it like on either side of the, the screen here with the examples where it's more of a drawing or a picture to make a poem. And on the right, you can also see that they found words in other areas and glued them together to create um, text on top of other text. Another idea which leads it is collage, which is sort of like what that other found word idea I just mentioned is. Many of us have been doing collage since we were about five years old, but you can get a little creative and make it a little more complex and interesting. So on the left, you see they found an image of this this very fancy looking man, and they were able to cut it and adjust it so that it looks like he's standing on top of this island, this, um, this town, and he's sort of holding on to it. And then by painting the background, they created the sky to sort of continue the image. In the top there, you can see that they very precisely cut out um, an image to create the heads of people, and then just found some circles of colored paper to highlight them. And on the right, you can see they took a black and white image and use black marker or some sort of black to color around to highlight this, this figure, and then in fact to color in his bird. So these are just a couple examples of ways that you can take images and give them a new and creative spin. 
You can also use painting in your altered book or your altered book crafts. Um, a fun thing about painting with book pages is that if you don't um, make the paint thick enough so that it's opaque, you can actually see the text sort of pop through the image that you're painting, like on the left here with the flowers and the yellow frame. Um, but you can also, again, make a found word or blackout po poem using paint, like on the right with the flower there. Um, or you can do whatever creative thing you can think of with paint, like the uh, lighthouse in the middle there. So we've already talked about window cutting in our earlier examples, but it's great to look at some precise things you can try. So on the left, you can see that they have highlighted specific letters and words so that as you turn the pages, you have them interacting in different ways, revealing more of the word. Uh, more of the words and having them uh, having it read in different ways. On the top there, they have gone ahead and cut out so that it creates a frame around an image that's actually taped or I'm sorry, glued to the page behind it. Um, so that way then that image is able to interact with both pages. And it looks quite nice framed like that. And on the right, you can see a more extreme version of window cutting where they've created a lot of depth and um, still saved some paper to include a note and a little hand to create sort of a story within the pages. So image transfers are also a fun technique. These are you made using packing tape, um, which gives them their translucent quality. So you can use them to layer like in the right, um, where they're layering that photo over another photo, or you can use them even not in a book, like the candle in the middle there to make um, homemade gifts, um, or you can layer them over text as shown on the left. And that creates the sort of, again, like textured, text in the background there. If you're going to make an image transfer, you're going to need packing tape and some kind of image taken from like a magazine or some other uh, papers around your house. You're just going to tape over that image. You're going to burnish it, which just means you're going to rub the image with like what they're using in the, in the picture is a popsicle stick. Um, and once you burnish it really well, you're just going to trim it up and stick it in a warm water bath. And then if you wait a few minutes, you should be able to rub the paper off of the back of the image and it'll leave the ink of the image that you taped over and you'll have that see through image there. If you want a more in depth tutorial about this, I have already made an image transfer video and we're going to go ahead and link to it. So there should be a link um, above this video. And these are just a few more examples of creative ways to use image transfers. On the left there, they took a image transfer and sometimes they're still sticky on the back when you're done with them. So they just put another piece of tape against it to create a, like, a, like a window, a completely transparent piece of image. And then they used a, a cutout, a window cutting, we would say, to create, um, to make it actually a window so that they've, they've taped it onto the book page. And then on the right, you can see they made a very large image transfer and used it to create texture. So it looks like there's water running across the book page, which is really cool. These are just a few more examples. Yeah, and this image here is mostly, it's just collage. So it's just images taken from various materials and collage, collaged together. Um, not much to it. Oh. <laughs> this is another one um, where they've cut out the butterfly or a moth. Um, <laughs> and just put it above um, the cutout frame and included a little bit of like a blackout situation in the inside. So this is very simple use of paint to create some drama and focus on the title of the chapter. And then they work with that as they move through the book um, further into the chapter, including this page where they're again able to use paint and um, you know, some creative use of words, I guess, um, to tell a bit of a story. This is just another example of someone using paint and enjoying the fun texture you can get from having text behind your image. And this is, um, the draft is a collage as well as the little circles there from another book page. The balloon sky image on the right is an image transfer. And They've taken a bit of paper to make a sort of 3D element between the pages. 
So thank you so much for coming to learn about altered books with us. Like we said, if you want to know more, please check out the 28 day challenge. And there's a few other videos on creative bugs, specifically about altered books, as well as about art journals and other things that may be relevant to you. We hope that you have fun and get creative and experiment with this. We find that the more you do it, the more ideas you come up with. Thanks. Bye. Bye.